Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Johanna and for those of you who are new here, welcome. And for those of you who are returning, welcome back. Here on my channel I do planner and planner related videos, DIY tutorials, budget videos, and the occasional new release video of items that I've listed to my Etsy shop. And if that is of interest to you, please consider subscribing to my channel and if you hit that little notification bell, you'll always be notified of when I do load a new video and if you could also comment like and share that does help build my channel and is truly appreciated all right guys we are actually doing lesson one of my new series on learning how to hand letter. Now I do need to put a disclaimer. If you already know the fundamentals of just the basic strokes or how to hold your pen or things like that, then this probably will be a little bit too basic for you. This is going to be um, at least a five part series where for the next five weeks, I'll be covering two different strokes in order to even make up the letters, how to hold your pen, different things like that and so it is designed to be very very level zero which I believe if you're watching you are and also very slow now I will have in the description box below uh, some planners here or some hand letterers here on YouTube who definitely have a lot more videos on this subject and a lot more advanced videos on this subject Alrighty, so what I need you to uh, take out, if you're gonna be following along this lesson with me, is you're going to want at least two different kinds of writing utensils. Now, if you have brush pens, definitely use that. If not, then just have a double, or uh, a number two pencil uh, with a sort of blunt edge. You don't want a sharp pencil for this lesson. And you're going to wanna have two you need two different, at least for this first video. Now you can write in a composition notebook. Um, I actually have a workbook that I created where I took some workbooks that I had purchased and I stuck them in a happy planner system and I actually do my practice here. So um, I will actually, for today's lesson, um, show you in, in both of these, okay? So let me get to a blank page. I'll take this out. Now again, I like the Happy Planner system because I can take the pages in and out, but if you are still on the fence on whether or not you want to commit your Happy Planner, if you don't even know what a Happy Planner is, any writing utensil and any notebook will work for this first part of the series. Now for every lesson and every practice session that you do, I want you to start the same way, where you're going to make a large E, and that should be about a, an inch, inch and a half. You don't have to measure it, nor do you have to use a ruler. But I do want you to make a very, very large E. And then that ends our E. And it is an E because that is open. And if you can see it right here, that is where I'm getting the letter E. All right, so make a long one at the top of your page. And then I also want you to put whatever date it is, where you are, when you are, I want you to put that in the corner. Now again, whether you're using your pen, whether you have a pencil, I mean, whatever you're using, just use that for this. And today is the 16th when I am filming that, okay? All right, now for this lesson only, what I'd like you to do is write the sentence that you see on the screen right here under the long E. And what it says is be a pineapple, stand tall, wear a crown, and be sweet. And not coincidentally, it's what the composition notebook says. 
Now, I want you to write this in whatever default writing style you have. So if you do cursive or a combination of, uh, this is really just to write the sentence. And when you get to the end, what I want you to do is put a period and then however your pen is, however you're holding your pen, I want you to place it down in that position, okay? So go ahead and write the sentence, and then at the end, place your pen in that position. Uh, you can pause the video and then come back when you are done. All right, guys, so you've got the sentence down, you've got your pen down, and with whatever secondary writing utensil you have, I just want you to put a mark of where your pencil is. And so this is how I hold my pencil. That's the angle that I hold my pencil. All right, and so I want you to do that with yours and then I want you to take a look at that. So your default style, however that is, however you are holding your pencil, whether it's like that, like that, I mean, people write however they want to. Um, this is probably going to be what is the hardest part of learning how to hand letter because in order to utilize a brush pen, pencil works for these first initial lessons, you need to keep your writing utensil parallel to the top of the page. So if I were to lay this down, it should always mirror the top of the page. Whether I have my page straight here or on an angle, that does not change, okay? So regardless of how your default is, when you're holding your pen, the way that the pen should be held is parallel to the top. Also, when you are using, again, your brush pen or your pencil, you don't want to be down here close to the barrel of your pen. You actually want to come up a little bit of ways and this will help when we actually go into the different strokes. And actually, let's start that now. So the first stroke that you're going to practice in this lesson one is the upstroke. And whether you go up on the straight, and I don't know if you can see that because it's rather light, or if you go on an angle, you just want to choose a lane and always do either or. Now for this first few lessons, the actual size of that does not matter. So whether you want to do three boxes, or three dots like that. Whether or not you want to do three lines or four lines or two lines, at this point, none of that matters. The only thing that matters is that you're practicing and that for that row, they are all the same height. If you do the next row a different height, awesome, doesn't matter. You just want to make sure whatever you start that row with height-wise is how you end that row with. Okay. Now with a pencil, you would think, um, and correctly so, that you're not going to be able to see the thicks and the thins, and that is absolutely true. When we go into the next row, I'll show you how this can still work. So what I want you to do is, with whatever writing utensil you have, and whatever height that you do, whether it's straight or slanty, again, that, that's up to you, I want you to go to the end of the row, Pause the video while you're doing that so that you can keep up with the lesson. And when you're done with your row, I want you to come back and we'll start with row two. All right, guys, so you are at the end of your first row where you practice your upstroke. Now for me, I personally prefer it when it goes straight up and down, but occasionally I will do practice rows where I do straight up and down for one row and then I do the angle. I actually haven't gotten to the point where I'm doing a lot of different letters, so I don't know if that's going to make a difference. But for right now, this is my default. Now for the downstroke, if you do have a brush pen and your pen is level or parallel to the top of the page, you take advantage of the width of the pen and you actually can get a really thick line. 
And so for the second row, I want you to practice that. Now, if you are using a pencil, you obviously are not going to get a thick line. But what you can do is practice, practice the pressure and get a dark line. All right, so I still wanna hold my pencil parallel to the top of the page. I still want the row height to be the exact same as I started, however I did that. And I do want it to be darker than it is here. Now I don't wanna puncture my page, but you will get the feel of it by pressing harder going down than when you are pressing very lightly going up. And that's how you can train yourself without actually having a brush pen. So I want you to do the entire row. Go ahead and pause the video again. And then once you are done with your row, I want you to come back and we'll do row number three. Okay guys, so row number three. We are going to actually combine these two. Now we're not gonna connect them, we're just gonna combine so that we start off with our thin upstroke and then we come down in our thick downstroke. Now you probably are like, wow, that's not very earth shattering. Here's the thing, when you're working from bottom up that's easy to do. And then when you're coming down, that's easy to do. But if you are immediately coming back up, it's actually harder to do that than when you're starting there. Because what the tendency is, if you push down hard, then you wanna kinda of push hard up because your, your hand literally just did that. But what you have to train your mind and your hand to remember is, okay, well, I came down thick, but now I need to lighten pressure. But then now I need to increase pressure. But now I need to lighten pressure. And that can be one of the harder parts to remember of this whole thing where you want to be able to distinctly create your different lines. So I want you to alternate between thin and thick and then get to the end of the row as you've been doing, pause the video while you do that. And then I will see you once you are done with that third row. All right, guys, so you've got your row of thins, you've got your row of thicks, and you've got your row alternating between the two. Now, I definitely want you to go ahead and continue practicing those. Those are the two strokes for this very first lesson. Now, this is not actually considered actual strokes. This is just what makes up those strokes, but I think this is fundamental. Again, while you're going at it, go slow and um, just work on your pressure and work on keeping your page or your writing utensil parallel to the top of the page. But what I want you to do to end this lesson and to end every either lesson or practice session that you do is in this letter E, because this does serve a purpose, is I want you to write the word hello. Now I know we have not even covered that, but that's okay. Just with the basic knowledge that you have right here, um, you know that coming down, it's going to be thick, and then it's going to be lighter, and then thick. And I want you to do it in your best attempt at hand lettering. Um, and the only rule is the top of the H the and the L's need to be at the top here, and the top of the H, the E, and the O should be at that middle line right there. Once you're done, uh, go ahead and pause it and do your word hello. And once you're done, bring me back and we'll go over the Y. All right, guys, if you're still here, you're probably feeling a little bit frustrated right now because you're looking at your page and you're like, Johanna, you didn't teach us how to do that. How could you ask us to do something you didn't teach us? Well, guys, that's actually kind of the point. So if this is truly your very first dabble in this, your very first lesson in this, this is going to be your benchmark. You've got your date and you're gonna be able to refer to this page as 
truly level zero. So whatever yours looks like, that's your baseline. That's what you want to improve upon. You absolutely only have the knowledge of the ups and the downs. That's, that's all you've learned so far. So whatever you've done probably looks a little rudimentary or you probably hate it or you're probably super discouraged. But I promise you that the more that you practice, and as we progress through the lessons and we learn how to create these letters, the easier it will become and the more progress that you'll see. Now, this looks decent. It's not my best work, but it looks decent. But I already look at this and I can be critical of not my progress in it, but just how I form the letters. Like these mountains right here, where it goes up and down like that, should be a lot crisper. This should not go less or lower than that. The way that I transitioned here should be a lot smoother. So again, I still see progress in what I first started. If you watch that video where I made the workbook, I couldn't even do the letter A. Now, they're still difficult, but they're not as difficult as when I started this about four and a half, five weeks ago. All right. Again, transition there, mountain there. They have real names. I don't know them. <laughs> right now, that's not important. We're just trying to learn the fundamentals, all right? So I want you to, if you can, uh, as your homework, practice the ups and the downs. Practice a whole row of one, a whole row of another, and then alternate between the two. And then every time you do a practice session, do the big E at the top with the date, and then do the word hello in your best attempt to hand letter. Now, if you are interested in my thoughts on using a Crayola pen and hand lettering, then um, that will actually happen in just a, a few seconds. But if you're not, I didn't want you to have to sit through that. Uh, if you're not, thank you so much for following me on this journey. Uh, let me know what you thought of lesson one. And as always, aloha. You're still here. And I didn't transition that well, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, but let me grab a Crayola pen and I'll be right back. Okay. All right guys, now if you've been interested in hand lettering, you might have seen there are quite a few people here on YouTube and even on Instagram who use Crayolas. Now I, I know that it works because I've tested it, um, but as a level zero beginner, I would not recommend it. Now I'm gonna write the word hello in my best attempt using a Crayola pen, and I don't want you to focus so much on watching me write the word hello. What I want you to focus on is how I write the word hello. We're gonna do it in real time, and once I'm done, I will give you my thoughts. Okay, so the reason why I would not recommend this as a level zero beginner is because you probably have not developed the muscle memory to keep your pen parallel to the page. Now with a brush pen, that is absolutely necessary in order to take advantage of how a brush pen is designed. Because this is shaped more in a cone and this is not flexible, you can, you can see that there, you actually need to maneuver the pen to take advantage for the thins with the tip of the pen. But then you need to maneuver the pen so it takes advantage of that flat edge to get your fix. And I, I wouldn't want you, no, let me, let me, 
backtrack. If all you're going to plan on using is Crayolas because they're inexpensive and readily accessible and you're never going to use a brush pen, then yes, that's, that's fine. But if you have brush pens or you plan to work two brush pens once you figure out whether or not you want to do this, then you're going to have to relearn how to keep the pen parallel. And I'd, hate, and I'd hate to have you guys do additional work just to get back to level zero. Now, the people that I do see who use it, they are already know the fundamentals. They already know how their letters work. They already know how to do this. So I think this is definitely something that you can work towards, but I really don't think it's even with the accessibility and the price point that it's worth starting with this just because you aren't going to learn the proper fundamentals and you're just gonna to have to relearn it later. All right, guys, thank you so much for following me on this journey. I I don't know how useful this was. I mean, I'm, I'm still learning myself. And so for the last four or five weeks, this is what I have come up with in my thoughts. And I would definitely be interested in knowing what you think. I'm actually done for practicing. My arm hurts and you will find the same if you do this for any length of time. I definitely wouldn't recommend uh, doing this hours and hours on time because your hand and your shoulder will hurt. But I definitely recommend doing some consistent practicing, even if it's just for five minutes and even if it's just with a pencil and a piece of paper. Right now, you just really want to learn how to get your up and your down in a somewhat consistent manner. Next week, we'll actually start on strokes one and two to make your letters. And guys, as always, aloha.